Shall we close our eyes and look into our Father in heaven? Thank you, loving Heavenly Father, for your blessed presence in our midst. Yes, Father. We are unworthy to have your presence, but Lord, it's your mercy, it's your grace. We humble ourselves to that most before you. Yes, Father, we want to be, become a zero before you, to be like a clay before the potter. What do we have to glory in, Lord, except you and your cross? Thank you, Lord. You are the Alpha and the Omega. You are the author and finisher, Lord. You are the author and perfect. You are the one who has begun and you alone can finish the work that you, are, that you have begun in our hearts, Lord. We want to be totally subject to you. Cleanse our hearts with your blood. With regard to all that we have hindered your working in our lives, Father. By our own self-will and our own stubbornness and arrogance and pride, Lord. Have mercy on us, cleanse us with your blood. Forgive us, Lord, and flood our hearts once again with your Holy Spirit, afresh, Lord, with the river of living water that flow from the that flows from the throne of the God and of the Lamb. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus, for the crystal clear water of heaven that can flood our hearts, that can drench our life with the love of heaven, with the joy and peace of heaven. Thank you, Father. We worship you. We want to hear your still small voice, even loud as a trumpet, that ministers to our heart and exhorts us and challenges us to rise up higher. Tell peace one of us, Father. Your name alone be glorified in Jesus' precious, sweetest name we pray. Amen. Amen. So for the last so many weeks, uh, the Lord enabled us to behold the glory of the Lord Jesus in the mirror of the word of God in the book of Revelation. And we saw how God is a God who longs to reveal himself. Of course, God is a God who hides himself. We saw that verse in Isaiah 45. Uh, we might remember that verse in Isaiah chapter 45. Uh, he hides himself, but he longs to reveal himself also. <laughs> That's the paradox. Uh, Isaiah 45 verse 15. Uh, there... The prophet Isaiah is saying, truly you are a God who hides himself, O God of Israel, Savior. God hides himself. God hides himself from the wise and prudent and the those people who glory in themselves. Uh, those, uh, you know, the Lord hides himself from the proud, those who are confident in themselves, those who think that they are somebody, God hides himself from them. But God is longing to reveal himself and he reveals himself to babes. That is what Jesus himself says in Matthew eleven twenty five. 25, I praise your father. Jesus usually uh, always, you know, except on those, except on the cross, Jesus always calls God the father. <laughs> on the cross, of course, as a criminal, uh, because he became sin on our behalf on the cross, he calls my God, my God. Uh, but here in Matthew eleven twenty five, there is a, a unique combination <laughs> where Jesus is uh, calling God. Matthew eleven uh, twenty five, where he says about this uh, God revealing Himself to the babes, he is calling God with a special address there. Matthew eleven verse twenty five. At that time, Jesus said, "I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth." So of course, always Jesus says, "Father." Uh, even at the tomb of Lazarus or wherever Jesus is praying, Father, Father, he refers to God as a Father. And here uh, he's saying, Father, and you are not only Father, you're the Lord of the sovereign Lord, the master of heaven and earth. And you have hidden him, yourself, uh, hidden yourself. And of course, the truths of God, uh, because God himself is truth. Jesus says, I am the truth. I am the way. I am the life. John 14, 6. So when God says God is hiding these truths, it's actually God is hiding himself because he himself is the truth. So you have hidden these things from the wise and intelligent and have revealed them to babes. That word reveal, as we uh, many a time have repeated, that reveal means apocalypto. That is the word, uh, the, uh, you know, the word that is uh, Greek word that is used over there. Apo means it's, it denotes separation and calypto means to hide, to veil, just like 
the most holy place was veiled from the rest of the tabernacle from the holy place uh, by a veil by a thick curtain a veil is there and even our spirit realm is veiled by that uh, the veil by the thick veil and that veil speaks of our own flesh uh, that was uh, the veil that was rent in the temple of jerusalem indicated jesus flesh hebrews 10 19 and 20 we read that and in our life that is our flesh our flesh is basically our self even if you respell flesh uh, there is a you know there is a self even in that spelling of that word flesh itself <laughs> so there's a, that self that strong self that self will uh, that i ego i want things to go my way uh, i want things to happen the way that i desire and plan i must be the center of attention everybody should look up to me everybody should respect me everybody should treat me the way that i want to be treated i want to be treated a certain way and if somebody rubs me the wrong way i will be offended so that i oh it can be some self pity the opposite side of that it is either that kind of uh, i that manifests itself as pride and arrogance and stubbornness or it can be even that stubbornness is manifested as some self pity and uh, uh, you feel sorry for yourself and you are worried about what others will think about you and uh, you are worried about the opinions of men we are seeking the honor of man that is also self and only when we humble ourselves and surrender ourselves before the thick curtain was placed at golden altar in the tabernacle we read that in exodus chapter 30 verse 6 exodus 30 30 verse 6 the golden altar was placed just uh, just before the veil and that golden altar symbolizes our will power which is neutral in itself but in that will power we can either choose our will we can exalt ourselves and choose our will or we can humble ourselves and choose the lord's will so if we humble ourselves before the lord's will lord's will is lord's word god's word which is like a two edged sword if we humble ourselves before the lord himself he himself is a word and from his mouth comes the two edged sword we read that in revelation revelation 19 Revelation nineteen thirteen, we read that Jesus' name is the Word of God, and uh, there we read verse fifteen. Revelation nineteen fifteen, his from his mouth comes a sharp sword. That is the Word of God, the sharp sword of the Word of God, sharper than any two-edged sword, as we read in Hebrews four twelve. And when we uh, when we sense the Lord speaking to us through the Word of God directly through some person, through some circumstances. through some book or through some sermon or through in whatever way when the god ministers to us and we know that it is the lord who is speaking when we hear the shepherd's voice we have a choice over there either to uh, exalt ourselves and uh, disregard that word of god or we can humble ourselves before the word and say the lord not my will in any area of any area of my life that you that you will be done in every area of my life i surrender in whatever whatever area that we have struggles in probably it would be some things in our workplace some things in our church some things in our uh you know family you know our relationship with spouse or relationship with children or relationship with in laws or relationship with other brothers and sisters in the church or relationship with our colleagues or boss or senior or junior or <laughs> strangers or whatever in whatever area it it would be our own personal uh, struggles in our own Uh, in, with regard to temptations of our flesh whatever be that they every way we can if we can if we can have that attitude of lord i want to become like a little baby i do not know anything lord apart from you i cannot i cannot do anything john 15 5 jesus says that apart from me you can do nothing and if we take that zero position before the lord then the lord would be revealing himself more and more to us then that veil would be that to us sword will be tearing renting this veil more and more in our life the more we humble ourselves in each and every day situ- life situations of our life uh, that is the way jesus walked jesus inaugurated that uh, way through the renting of the veil that is his flesh that is what we read about the new and living way in hebrews 10 19 and 20 the way of the cross the way of death to self but there is a Uh, there is a overwhelming resurrection life in our spirit 
and that is the most beautiful life that we can ever live on the face of the earth and that is how john was in the spirit that is what even today's portion john, revelation 1:10 uh, uh, i was in the spirit on the lord's day and <laughs> john is saying there so uh, and we saw that it is on a on an island that god revealed uh, himself jesus revealed himself all the more to john of course at the age of more than 90 years of age john would have had much personal intimate revelations of the lord even as a disciple who walked very close to the lord even leaning on jesus bosom john had such an intimacy such a closeness to the lord jesus and even more uh, when he was filled with the holy spirit on the day of pentecost and subsequently every day of his life when he was flooded with the holy spirit and when the lord uh, mightily used him and took him through many trials and uh, tribulations and he himself calls himself as a brother verse 9 revelation 1 9 a brother uh, a fellow partaker in the tribulation and kingdom and perseverance a just an ordinary brother he is not calling himself as the most <laughs> reverend apostle john or anything like that uh, he is not referring himself to some bishop or archbishop or right reverend or wrong reverend or uh, you know that kind of any <laughs> uh even not even dr john <laughs> so <laughs> he's uh, he's an ordinary brother among his brothers and uh, uh, he says uh, i am your brother i am ordinary i am your ordinary brother uh, here he, of course uh, he was one of the oldest persons and al always of course the uh, uh, most saintliest holiest person walking on the earth that time uh, and uh, he is saying that I am an ordinary brother who shares with you in the tribulation, which is in Christ Jesus. He went through much tribulation, even the even at the even at an old age. You know, usually uh, people at least respect the age and uh, would uh, what to say would <laughs> exempt them from some tough times and all. But uh, the Roman government was so cruel that uh, even at that age, uh, John was exiled to Patmos. He was ministering among uh, all the churches in the church at Ephesus and all the other churches and all, he was ministering over there and uh, he was exiled. Uh, he was sent as an exile to the Isle of Patmos, to the island called Patmos, verse 9. And it is when in it, it is when uh, it is on these islands that the Lord is revealing himself. There is this beautiful verse in Hosea chapter 2, uh, Hosea after Ezekiel and all, after Daniel, after Daniel, the, comes the book of Hosea. In Hosea chapter 2, uh, verse 14 is a very beautiful verse where uh, God is telling, Therefore, behold, I will allure her, bring her into the wilderness and speak kindly to her. I will bring her to the wilderness. To a desert wilderness kind of experience. Many a time when we are in our comfort zones, when we are in our, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, you know, you know, uh, uh, places where we are very familiar with and all, sometimes actually, you know, there is some something that is hindering us from really getting connected to God. So God may have to take us to some island. Uh, <laughs> uh, when we hear the testimonies of many people, we find that uh, God took them to uh, some uh, some other place other than their hometown. <laughs> then only they came to faith. And uh, even myself also, I also <laughs> I was born and brought up in Kollam here <laughs> in Karnataka, and the Lord took me to Trivandrum uh, to study in uh, second uh, study pre degree in uh, their Marvinus College in Trivandrum. There, uh, the Lord met with me. So I have heard of many brothers. Uh, whom uh, the Lord would have to take them to some Gulf or some other, <laughs> some other, you know, some other place, some other far country. Sometimes, actually, you know, all those things and all have a uh, have something to do with, uh, you know. Of course, you know, as far as John is concerned, he didn't, uh, you know, even he was always connected with the Lord and all. But you know, even that uh, being an island and getting a closer revelation of the Lord speaks volumes to us also. Sometimes, actually, this. Uh, traditions and all have uh, much hold on us many a time and when we are taken away from our close relatives like parents and siblings and all uh, you know we can tend to uh, look little more independently and little more uh, objectively and uh, we can and even through some trials that the Lord is taking us 
uh, when we are away from our home, the Lord can reveal himself. And God reveals himself to the humble, to the babes. And that is the eternal principle of God. Only, only if we are humbled. So for humbling us, God would take us through many trials and many difficulties and all. And the Lord's purpose is that even through all that, we would be humbled and we would be able to look up in the island all around would be sea and you know the only place that we can look up to is to heavens to look up just like you know you would have heard brother Zach saying that hospital bed is a place where we can easily look up to God because you know over your both limbs uh, there are some IV drips and all and uh, all things are there and you cannot even uh, sit up so you can you can lie down on the bed just like that and look up <laughs> so it is very easy to look up in a hospital bed and uh, so literally also and also spiritually speaking also so even whatever tribulations and whatever uh, whatever things that the lord allows in our life it is actually to reveal uh, even the book uh, that we are studying itself is called the book of revelation the lord wants to reveal himself and he hides himself from people who are proud and he reveals himself to of course, the Lord began to reveal himself when we became born again, but he wants to reveal himself all the more as, uh, as our heavenly father, as our heavenly bridegroom, as a shepherd, as a master, as a king, as our all in all, as the almighty God. And he wants to reveal himself more and more to us. He wants to reveal himself as our foreigner, uh, one who was tempted in all points as we are yet without sin. And uh, the more we have the revelation of Christ in our spirit, the more we are spiritually mature, the more humbler, the humbler we are, the uh, greater and mightier would be the revelation of Christ in our spirit. And of course, our passion and prayers, we go through the, uh, the study of this book of Revelation, is not that we would gather much more knowledge. Of course, we would be able to understand many things, but beyond all that, if you are not able to reach out to Jesus himself and know him a little more deeper, then all the study would be useless. It would be just adding the adding to the head knowledge. And that head knowledge alone, knowledge makes arrogant. First Corinthians 8 1. But love edifies. The letter kills, but spirit gives life. Second Corinthians 3 6. And we are not, uh, we are called uh, to leave the oldness of the letter. Romans 7 4 says that uh, not in the oldness we have to serve the law. Not in the oldness of the letter, but in the newness of spirit. Uh, Romans chapter 7, verse uh, 6 rather. Newness of the... So that, we, uh, you know, they, we are died to the law. We have been released from the law, having died to that. We died when Christ died. We also died. And uh, if we take that zero position before the Lord, we die to ourselves. And we die to ourselves. We die to the law. We die to the world. And... And we are released from the bondage that marriage relationship, marriage relationship with the law, as we are, as it is described in Romans seven, the first verses. And we die to the law, and we are released from the law, so that we serve in the newness of the spirit, not in the oldness of the letter. When we are reading the Bible, if we get, uh, you know, if it is only some stale letters, and we are not able to get anything fresh. We are not able to sense what the Lord is trying to speak to our hearts, then actually we are still bound to the law. Uh, you know, our self is very strong, but we humble ourselves and ask the Lord to fill us with the Holy Spirit. When we surrender ourselves before the sword of the word of God, the sword will tear, rent the wheel and the fire on the sword, the fire on the sword we read in Genesis 3.24, the cherubim is standing with a fiery sword, sword with a flame of fire. And the flame, this uh, flame is speaking about the Holy Spirit anointing the word of God. So the Holy Spirit, more uh, the rent, veil is rent in our life, more the self is broken in our life, more the Holy Spirit would be able to flood our spirit. And the more the Holy Spirit floods our spirit, more we would be able to have a revelation of Christ. And uh, we'll be edified in our spirit, we'll be built up in our spirit, we'll be mature in our inner man, that is inner man is our spirit. And we'll be able to know Christ all the more intimately. We'll be able to hear him all the more clearly. I was in the spirit and I heard behind me a loud voice. That is what we read in uh, Revelation 1.10. And uh, we saw that uh, Revelation uh, verse 1 itself 
chapter 1 verse 1 it is for the bond servants and he showed it to bond servant john to uh, to show it to other bond servants only those who are bond slaves of the lord those who are really sold themselves out for the lord alone he said the lord i want your will alone in every part of my life my career my marriage my future my ambitions everything lord not my will but your will lord i don't know what your will in every area but lord i can just surrender to your will whatever be is your whatever is your will sometimes we don't know in one particular area what this lord's will sometimes with regard to our career with, our, with regard to something with regard to a job or some decisions that we need to take but if we are sincere and genuine and lord if you have a cry in our heart lord i don't know what your will is i know it is not clear to me but lord i want to do your will i surrender to whatever is your will and then the holy spirit will flood our hearts and renew our minds and help us to prove what the perfect will of god that which is perfect and good and acceptable that is what we read in romans 12 1 and 2 romans 12 1 and 2 giving us as a living sacrifice before the lord in uh, simple words <laughs> i usually paraphrase as romans 12 1 and 2 like surrender your will before the lord and prove god's perfect will this romans 12 1 and 2 in you know yeah of course there are many many truths about worship and uh, everything in that romans 12 1 and 2 but with regard to knowing god's will finding god's will the more we surrender our will before the lord according to the light that the lord has given us if we have surrendered surrendered everything before the lord then uh, you know when we have surrendered everything before the lord as a burnt offering part by part lord all the areas of my life i lay on the altar then the holy spirit the fire of heaven just like the fire of heaven will come and burn the burnt offering in uh, leviticus here the corollary of the burnt offering is this living sacrifice romans 12:1 presenting our bodies as a living sacrifice lord my eyes belongs to you my tongue belongs to you my ears belongs to you my uh, brain the functions of my brain my mind belongs to you my hands my feet every part of my body lord everything is on the altar all to all to jesus we sang that song in the beginning all to jesus i surrender i feel the sacred flame in the last answer we sang today so lord everything i surrender before the lord and when we surrender everything the blood of the holy spirit the fire of the holy spirit will uh, will lit us up will uh, will come into our spirit you know when we are surrendering everything it is like uh, so that we will surrendered before the to the sword of the word of god and uh, you know the according to the light god has given us of course much more much majority major part of our uh, flesh is actually still unconscious to us actually we are not aware of many things which are untrice like in our own flesh but according to the light god has given us we can surrender and there will be a renting of that veil and the more that veil is rent the more the holy spirit will be flooding our spirit in the most holy place most holy place is our own spirit and when we are flooded with the holy spirit in our spirit it is as if we are entered the uh, most holy place the, the literal most holy place that is the third heaven where god is dwelling we will be able to experience the fullness of joy in the lord's presence with the holy spirit floods our heart the holy spirit fills us we'll be actually be in the lord's presence in the most holy place where there is fullness of joy uh the real most holy place that jesus entered is the heaven itself that is what we read in hebrews 9:24 and uh, we'll be sensing the fullness of joy in the presence of the lord in your presence is the fullness of joy roman sorry Psalm sixteen eleven, uh, you you will know make known to me the path of life. That path of life is the new and living way, and God has to make it known to us. God has to reveal that to us. This God will reveal only to the humble, those who humble themselves like a little child, and we we are entering the most holy place, the real presence of the Lord in heavenlies, uh, where the broken and contrite are dwelling, as we read in Isaiah fifty seven fifteen. and we will be enjoying the lord's presence and when the holy spirit floods our heart the holy spirit will uh, will then be uh, influencing the way we think that is how that is how romans 12 1 says about uh, surrendering ourselves then romans 12 2 says about our minds being renewed so that means actually the lord gives us a passion a thirst to read and hear the word of god more and more and the more we hear the word of god the more our thought pattern would be aligned to the word of god the more we'll be able to see things from a heavenly perspective more and more we'll be seeing the money and material things of the world 
uh, the honor of people, the fleshly temptations of the world, everything will be able to see more and more from a higher heavenly, godly perspective, from God's perspective, from heaven. And uh, so our minds are renewed. And then uh, slowly, I will, uh, you know, the mind set on the spirit is life and peace, Romans 8, 6. Then our mind is guided by the Holy Spirit. There will be an increasing life and peace in the direction of God's will. There are two or three options and we don't know what to choose. But when we are guided by the Holy Spirit uh, and we are pray, praying about some particular thing, we do not have any freedom, then we know that oh, then some unrest may not it, is indicative there, but it's not the Lord's leading. Only if we have surrendered ourselves, then only he will be able to uh, sense this promptings and leading of the Lord. Otherwise, we'll be deceived. But if you have surrendered everything and uh, we want to do only the Lord's will, then the Lord will be able to guide us uh, with that moving, that prompting of the life and peace in our heart, which is the perfect will of God, that which is good and acceptable and perfect, as we read in Romans 12, 2. And uh, so like that, uh, if you have surrendered everything to the Lord, yeah, so Romans 12, 1 and 2, surrender your will to the Lord, and then you will be able to uh, do God's perfect will in our life. Not only know, but also prove with our life that we are doing God's perfect will, that we are experiencing God's presence day to day in our daily life, in our workplace, wherever we go, whatever we do. And, uh, you know, there will be an empowerment to do God's will. Uh, that is what Paul says in Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. If Christ is strengthening me to do God's will. I'll be able to do everything. The Lord is strengthening me because apart from him, I can do nothing. But with him, I'll be able to do everything. John 15, 5 and Philippians 4, 13, the two sides of the same coin. And uh, so we saw the blessedness in reading and uh, verse 3, Revelation 1, 3, reading and hearing uh, and heeding, obeying the things which are written uh, in this uh, book, the time is near. Uh, John verse 4, to the seven churches, not uh, church, but seven churches, because it's not a denomination. Denomination is man's uh, invention, but God uh, God is ordaining that there will be local churches glorifying the Lord in many localities, each under the headship of Christ. Seven churches, that is what we read in verse 12 or so. I saw seven golden lampstands. Uh, lampstand is denoting the church, verse 20. And uh, in the Old Testament, it was a one, it was one seven-branched lampstand. But in the New Testament, there's not one denomination with many branches or anything. But uh, it is uh, many local churches. But of course, like-minded local churches have fellowship with one another. They grow uh, and encourage one another together. But uh, it is not a denomination. That is why the corruption in uh, Ephesus or Thyatira or Pergamum or Laodicea or uh, uh, Sardis did not affect Smyrna or Philadelphia. Smyrna and Philadelphia were the churches where Jesus didn't have to point out anything wrong to them because they were always already repenting according to the light God had given them. God didn't have to tell them to repent because they were already repenting. Uh, the church at Smyrna and church in Philadelphia. But other churches, uh, there were much corruption. But the, that corruption didn't spread to the Smyrna and Philadelphia because each church was under the local headship, uh, local authority headed by Christ. So that's why uh, you know, the real New Testament pattern is not denomination, but churches planted by godly men with apostolic ministry and uh, having fellowship of churches growing one another, growing together in the Lord. And uh, we saw uh, that uh, the sevenfold Holy Spirit in verse 4, uh, Isaiah 11, 2 and 3, the seven characteristics of the Holy Spirit, Spirit of the Lord, Spirit of Wisdom, Spirit of Counsel, Spirit of Knowledge and Understanding like that. And then uh, we saw all those verses. I do not want to go all those in detail. We saw all those details in many weeks. And verse 9, I join your brother and fellow partaker in tribulation. Uh, so I fellow partaker, fellow partaker. Uh, koinonia is the word for fellowship. And uh, fellow partaker a related word is used over there in the Greek. Uh, that is sukoinonos. Uh, Sun or S-Y-N. That means with. So koinonos. Uh, koinonas means partner or associate. So sukoinonas. Fellow partaker. That means one who is sharing. Fellow partaker. Uh, 
in the afflictions of Christ. Even in Philippians 3, Paul is saying a uh, similar thing there. Philippians 3.10, Paul is saying that, that I may know the power of his resurrection, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings. Uh, Philippians 3.10, that I may know him, the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death. Fellowship of his sufferings, Jesus suffered in the flesh. When he said no to temptations, no to the pleasures of sin, opposite of pleasure is suffering. So there is a suffering in the flesh. Of course, suffering due to the trials and tribulations and sufferings uh, when we say no to the temptations of our flesh, whether it is temptations for money or honor or pleasures, whatever be those, when we say no to that, there is a suffering and and through those, through that fellowship of the sufferings, uh, we suffer with the Lord, we die, and then we'll be able to know the power of the resurrection, and then we'll be able to know him. So suffering, death, resurrection, knowing the Lord, four things there in Philippians 3.10. And uh, not only uh, Paul, but also John is also saying the same thing. I am also a fellow partaker in the tribulation. Uh, you know, much tribulation he underwent. And it is because he could, he underwent all those tribulations, he was able to encourage many other people uh, who were going through similar tribulations. Even to church in Smyrna, which was one of the most faithful churches there, uh, to them also, verse 10, Philippians, sorry, Revelation 2.10, do not fear what you're, you're, what you're about to suffer. Behold, the devil is about to cast some of you into prison so that you will be tested and you will have tribulation for 10 days. So before prophesying about tribulation to these uh, fellow churches, fellow church brothers and sisters, God had to take John also through tribulation. <laughs> uh, many a time, uh, you know, the New Testament, not only, not many a time, but always the New Testament ministry comes by the Lord taking us through some trials and testing and all. And in those trials and testing, <laughs> we will be clinging on to the Lord and uh, the Lord will be comforting us and encouraging us and giving imparting his life into our spirit and that life that eternal life that life of the lord that life through the holy spirit that life which is full of grace and truth that uh, will be overflowing from our lives through our words and through our deeds uh, and that becomes our ministry and uh, so you know uh, john has to write about the great tribulation the reign of the antichrist and all and uh, before writing about the great tribulation and all, uh, God had to take him, he himself, through this uh, course or syllabus of tribulations. We already saw that in Second Corinthians last week, also Second Corinthians chapter one, verse three and four, where Paul is saying uh, one of the blessed reasons why God takes us through trials. Second uh, Corinthians three, sorry, Second Corinthians one, verse three. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and of, and of all, all comforts. That comfort, that word is paraclesis. Uh, Jesus, uh, Jesus called the Holy Spirit paracletas, uh, encourager. The paracletas is the word that is translated as helper. It, it, is, it can be also be translated as encourager, advocate. Jesus is called the paracletas in First John 2, the word it is translated as advocate over there. <laughs> so paracletus is the word that is used over there. And paracletus comes from parakelio. Para means uh, near, like paramedical, allied health senses. Para means near. And kelio means to call. To call near and to encourage and comfort and encourage, comfort and strengthen and uh, instruct. And that is the word meaning of parakelio. And uh, that para. Para, uh, paraclesis, that comfort and encouragement and all. Uh, so God is called the father of mercies and God of all comforts. All true comfort is through the Holy Spirit from the Father in heaven who comforts us in all our afflictions. Not some of our afflictions but all our afflictions, the Lord <laughs> is there to comfort us. Encourage, that word comfort can also be translated as strengthens us, encourages us. That word parakelio the many shades of that meaning. That is the same word that is used in uh, Hebrews 3.13 or so. Engrage one another day after day. That is parakelio one another. So that is uh, 
in NKZ Vanu, it was translated as exhort one another. In NASB, it is translated as encourage one another. So exhort, encourage are many shades of the uh, meaning of that, uh, you know, deep word. It's a uh, word with much deep meaning. So that para, uh, para kelio, the different, uh, you know, meanings, uh, the different uh, shades of meaning is encourage and exhort and uh, comfort and instruct and teach and all. And uh, God of all comforts, he comforts us in all our afflictions so that we will be able to, he comforts us in all our afflictions so that we will be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with, this, uh, with what? Not with some empty words, but with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. God comforts us in our afflictions. With that comfort, we are comforting others, those who are going through similar afflictions. That is how uh, God took John through much tribulation, even at the age of more than 90. Uh, to be exiled to a barren rocky island uh, where you know we don't know how many people were there and who were there to help John and uh, how much food he was provided with we don't know and uh, they through all that you know he was comforted and encouraged and strengthened by the Lord and with that comfort he is comforting the church even through all these centuries through the book of Revelation uh, so with which we ourselves are comforted by God then Verse 5, Second Corinthians 1, 5. Uh, for just as the sufferings of Christ are ours in abundance. So it is abundant suffering. Many people, prosperity, wealth, health, theology, people won't like these verses because these verses wouldn't be there in their Bible. I don't know. They would be using some, some other Bible to preach their doctrine. But here, the apostle is saying that the sufferings of Christ are ours in abundance. So also our comfort is abundant <laughs> through Christ. Uh, you know, abundant suffering and abundant comfort. Uh, my grace is sufficient for you. Second Corinthians 12 9. And verse 6 If you are comforted, it is for your comfort and salvation. For if you are comforted, it is for your comfort, which is effective in patient enduring of the same sufferings which you also suffer. Uh, then also, uh, you know, uh, verse 7 also, there also the word comfort. 10 times that word comfort is coming in this verse 3 to 7. At ten times that word comfort is coming, and our comfort for you is firmly grounded, and our hope for you is firmly grounded, knowing that you are sharers of our sufferings, so also you are sharers of our comfort also. Uh, so that is the comfort that comes to us through the Apostle John, and he says that he is a fellow partaker uh, in uh, the tribulation. He shares with us in the tribulation, and when we share in the tribulation, then will be shares in the kingdom also. Kingdom means this is the king of our life and kingdom of God is not eating and drinking but righteousness, joy and peace in the Holy Spirit. Uh, righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. That is what we read in Romans 14, 17. And when the Holy Spirit floods, our, when Jesus is the Lord of our life, the Holy Spirit is flooding our life. The Holy Spirit imparts the righteousness of Christ in our spirit, the righteousness of Christ, the character of Christ. And uh, there will be peace of the peace that surpasses our understanding. There will be joy that is inexpressible and full of glory. As First Peter one eight, Peter says, "We have joy inexpressible and full of glory." You know, he's you. Uh, he don't know what words to use to express uh, that adjective of the, that word joy. So it's a inexpressible joy, full of joy in the presence of the Lord. Uh, and uh, that is the kingdom. That is the fellow partaker. Uh, in the tribulation and in the kingdom. When we go through tribulation or trials in our life, then actually the Lord would be able to help us to experience his kingdom, that he being the king of our life. And then we will be able to have perseverance. It is through this tribulation and Jesus being the king of our life that uh, we get much more perseverance. Perseverance that upamene is that word used over there. It, it can be translated as perseverance or endurance or uh, steadfastness, uh, long suffering, patience. A similar word, macrothymy, is used there in Galatians 5 22. Uh, when, when the fruit of the Holy Spirit is explained over there, love, joy, peace, patience. That patience is macrothymia, and macrothymia and hupamine is similar meaning. So, actually, this endurance or perseverance in Christ it, it come, it's, it comes through the Holy Spirit, every good and perfect thing. Perfect gift is from the Father of Lights, James 1 17. So, if there is a perseverance that is from the Lord, that has to come from above through the Holy Spirit and whatever of God that has to come to us is through the Holy Spirit. 
who is the Holy Spirit, is dwelling within us. Father and Son are there in the third heaven. And it is the Holy Spirit who ministers to our heart, ministers to our spirit, our inner man, the endurance, the patience, the perseverance of Christ. And even to bear fruit for the Lord, we need perseverance. Actually, in spite of many difficulties or failures, uh, only if the Lord can instill that perseverance. When we, uh, you know, if we turn to Luke chapter 8, there in the parable of the sower, about the good soil, it is described over there in verse 15. Luke 8, 15. But the seed in the good soil, these are the ones who have heard the word in an honest and good heart and hold it fast and bear fruit with perseverance. So if there has to be a fruit and that to a hundredfold fruit, there has to be perseverance. Upamene, the same word is used over there. Even we are exhorted in Hebrews 12, 1 and 2 to run, run this race, looking unto Jesus, run this race with perseverance. The Upamene is the same word used over there. And when we uh, face many difficult situations and trials and temptations in our life. If we surrender ourselves, if we humble ourselves and surrender ourselves to the Lord, the Holy Spirit will come, uh, come and flood our hearts and the fruit of the Holy Spirit is patience, kupamini, makrotaimiya, steadfastness, endurance. And uh, then, uh, you know, we'll have a a divine quality of patience, not a human patience. Even, even unconverted people also wait for many things in a queue in the bus stand or in some railway station or somewhere. They also wait. Uh, you know, it is, uh, you know, it is a good manners to wait for turn and all. But the divine quality of perseverance. The opposite is impatience and impulsivity. You know, today the especially the young generation would be instant gratification. Everything they want instantly. But actually, uh, good things take time. <laughs> so, uh, you know, even a, for a child to be born into this world, God has ordained that for a human child to be born into this world, nine months, seven days, <laughs> almost, uh, you know, more than nine months or uh, around 10 months and all. Sometimes, it, uh, I mean, around nine months, of course, it will take for a baby to be born into this world. So like that. Uh, we need patience, even for Jesus' uh, character, especially, um, you know, younger days when we fall into temptations and all, we can become impatient. Oh, how can I ever overcome sin? I am always falling into the same temptation. We need patience, uh, Lord. Uh, it is You are teaching me something even through these failures. I want to humble myself. I am such an arrogant, self-centered person. That's why, Lord, I didn't receive grace. I was proud. That's why. Uh, God gives grace, grace to the humble. God dresses the proud because I didn't get the grace of the Lord. That's why I fell into sin. So uh, through all that failures and trials and all, the Lord teaches us some patience, actually. So sometimes we don't know when some particular trial will be over. <laughs> you know, there in Revelation 2.10 to the church in Smyrna, uh, you will have testing for 10 days. 10 days, not literally 10 days, but some uh, specific period of time God has allowed. And uh, so there is a specified time for each trial and temptation of our life. And uh, we don't know when that will end. You know, I still remember when I was under house arrest for my faith from my dear parents many years ago, because I came from a Hindu background into this faith. And, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, 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 so I was in Trivandrum and I came to faith and after some six months I came back to my home here in Karnayabali, the same home I'm where I'm speaking here, the word of God. That same home, you know, uh, this word of God was deprived of me. Uh, I was deprived of the word of God. Uh, the Bible and the spiritual books and always taken away by my parents and, uh, you know, they didn't want me to continue in this faith and they didn't want me to go to any meetings or anything. So they, it was like a lockdown for me. Just like, like a COVID lockdown in it was in 2000 only I experienced that lockdown <laughs> because you know the world is experiencing lockdown nowadays but uh, you know in the COVID times we know what lockdown is but actually that time I didn't know how long I will have to be like this without the bible without any fellowship and I will be secretly trying to phone somebody up through the land phone there that time there won't be a mobile phone and so <laughs> in the land phone I'll be trying to phone up some uncles and aunties in the church and try to have some fellowship secretly without anybody's knowledge so I don't know when this will end when the entrance results will come when I will be getting admission to a BBS and all those things and also 
uh so that time but actually i know looking back actually the lord was able to uh write some endurance or perseverance in my heart he is the one who writes faith and endurance and love and joy and peace everything the holy spirit fruit of the holy spirit the lord has to write uh in our hearts and uh, even faith is also fruit of the holy spirit in nsb we read faithfulness but pistis that greek word is actually translated as faith it can be translated as faithfulness also but faith and faithfulness both are fruit part of the fruit of the holy spirit and even in romans we know uh, in romans 5 and uh, james 1 we read similar verses like tribulation brings about perseverance verse 3 not only this romans 5 3 we also exult in our tribulations we exult we rejoice in our tribulations knowing that tribulation brings about perseverance without the tribulation without some opposition all those who decide to live godly in christ jesus will be persecuted second timothy 2:13 uh, so uh, second timothy 3:12 rather sorry second timothy 3:12 uh, they we read that uh, all those who, it is not that some might be persecuted or anything like that but uh, the word of god says in second timothy 3:12 indeed indeed all who decide decide to live godly in crisis will be persecuted that is for sure guarantee uh, so we are been uh, given uh, we have been granted not only to believe in his name but also to suffer for his name sake uh, we read that in philippians 129 and uh, acts 542 apostle john and peter the same apostle john who is writing the book of revelation they were rejoicing uh, because they were considered worthy to suffer shame for his name and here back in romans 5 3 not only this by uh, but we also exult in our tribulations knowing that tribulations brings about perseverance and perseverance brings about proven character and proven character brings about hope and that hope does not does not disappoint because the love of god has been poured out within our hearts through the holy spirit who has been given to us because the holy spirit is poured out within our hearts the holy spirit instills us hope and perseverance and proven character and we are able to exult even in our tribulation the same thing james also says uh, there in james 1 james 1 2 consider it all joy my brethren when you encounter various trials knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance or kupamine or perseverance or steadfastness and let endurance have its perfect result so that you may be perfect complete lacking in nothing so god wants to uh be wants us to be fellow partakers in tribulation and kingdom and endurance or perseverance and these are in Christ Jesus and he uh, he was on the isle island called patmos and uh, yeah uh patmos that word meaning is my killing uh, it was a small rugged rocky bare barren island in the aegean sea uh and that aegean sea is actually elongated embayment of mediterranean sea between europe and asia so in that uh, he, he was there in that uh, island because of the word of god and the testimony of jesus as we heard anjani brother reading some uh, translations last week actually some translation says uh, i was there in the island of patmos because i preached the word of god and told people about jesus <laughs> if we do not tell people about jesus we won't be persecuted he is just say you know general things and you have to be good and you have to be kind uh, of course we need to be wise when we share about jesus but uh, to be the, to the receptive people we need to share we shouldn't be foolishness we shouldn't be foolish in our testifying and witnessing but actually when the lord gives us opportunity to stand for the truth and when we stand for the truth uh not only from sometimes actually persecution would be there even from so called christian people <laughs> sometimes from uh, anti christian people or whatever so uh so there uh, you know because i <laughs> because i preach the word of god i i uh, talk to people about jesus because of the uh, you know there is a simple paraphrase of that because of the word of god and and the testimony of jesus uh, testimony of jesus the life of jesus was manifested in the apostle john and uh, he hold fast to the hell fast to the word of god and because of that that phrase we saw uh, because of the word of god and the testimony of jesus that verse that phrase we see in verse 2 and verse 9 of chapter 1 and then revelation 12:17 about the remnant 
uh, that is the uh, end time disciples holding fast to the word of God and to the testimony of Jesus, commandments of the Lord Jesus and the testimony of Jesus. And there, uh, Revelation 19, 10 also, twice that uh, word is used over there. Testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Even true prophecy is the sharing of God's word. And the true sharing of God's word is actually pointing somebody to the testimony or life of Jesus. Uh, it is not to some human being that true sharing of the word of God will be pointing to this pointing the true sharing of the word of God will be pointing us towards Jesus. Revelation 19, 10, do not do that. I am a fellow servant of yours and your brethren, brethren uh, who hold fast the testimony, who, who, who hold the testimony of Jesus. Worship God for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. And chapter 20, verse 4, also the same phrase. I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded because of the testimony of Jesus and because of the word of God. Word of God uh, and testimony of Jesus go together where there is the true word of God is there. There, a life with the testimony of Jesus would be there. And the true brothers and sisters of Christ are those who hold on to the word of God and to the testimony of Jesus. If you hold to our own human traditions, you want to please men and hold to human traditions and uh, then actually you won't be persecuted. Many people do not want to be, I mean, sometimes actually persecution would be through words and through insulting. You would be ostracized or, you, uh, you know, people wouldn't uh, come and mingle with us. You wouldn't be seen as some you know alien people and all <laughs> so uh, so in whatever way that persecution uh, some way, whether it is mocking or flogging or whatever uh, whatever be that persecution is the lord so one day decides to send in our life but if we only that will happen only if we are wholehearted for the lord if we are compromisers if we just uh, kind of jellyfish with no skeleton if we you know adapt to whatever uh, situation with the worldly people, we go along with the worldliness of them, then we won't be persecuted. So we stand up for purity and we do not mingle with the worldly minded people and we stand as a testimony apart from them. We do not indulge in conversations of gossip and backbiting and uh, this, um, what to say, arguments about uh, politics and all those things and all. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, actually, when we take a stand uh, pure for the Lord and for his word, then there will be, people will be hating us. I still remember one person told that, uh, you know, he came to faith because uh, one, one, of the main, one of the things that helped him to come to faith was that uh, he heard the testimony of another believer in that college. Uh, so some friends were telling about that particular believer. Oh, she does everything according to the Bible only. <laughs> so they were not uh, telling uh, with an admira with admiration or adoration or anything like that. They were hating that girl. Oh, she doesn't uh, come with us with uh, for all these parties and all those, uh, you know, these kind of things and all. She does everything according to the Bible only. So actually, so some other was this particular believer, this boy, brother who later became a believer. One of the main, one of the many things that uh, you know helped him to think seriously about Christianity is that. Oh, is there, are there people like that who does everything according to the Bible? <laughs> so like that, that uh, really was one uh, point, uh, one, uh, that life, uh, you know, that girl herself who didn't know that, uh, you know, her life became an encourage, encouragement for some other person to come to faith and also, you know, sometimes the worldly people would be very worked up. Uh, oh, how can these people like be like that? Uh, you know, they cannot be one among us. Uh, they are like special people and all. So, but, um, uh, you know, that kind of uh, testimony. And there'll be kind of a persecution there, ostracization or people keeping us aloof and all. And then we read uh, verse 10, I was in the spirit. Uh, I was in the spirit. I was in the most holy place. Uh, spirit, I was in the spirit means I was in the Holy Spirit. Uh, the Holy Spirit was flooding. John the Apostle's human spirit. And he was flooded with the Holy Spirit and uh, his spirit was in tune with the Holy Spirit. He had, because he had surrendered his self-will totally to the Lord, the Holy Spirit could flood him all the more. And I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. On the Lord's day, of course, uh, of course, John was uh, in the Spirit all the days, but especially on this particular Lord's day. Lord's day is Sunday because Jesus uh, rose again from the dead on a Sunday morning. So we're celebrating when we are gathering 
uh, together on Sundays, we're actually uh, celebrating the resurrection of the Lord. Of course, in countries where Sunday is not a holiday, like Gulf countries and all, they uh, meet on Fridays and all, no problem with that. But what all with that? But, uh, you know, uh, Bible is saying uh, the, uh, you know, Sunday to be uh, referring to the Lord's Day. We see some references in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 20. Acts 20, verse 7. There we read that uh, on the first day of the week, that is Sunday. And First Corinthians 16, 2, uh, first, first Corinthians chapter 16, verse 2, on the first day of every week, each one of you, uh, you know, to help the saints who were suffering. Paul was telling, Paul was asking, not asking money for his own needs or anything like that. He was asking, uh, you know, contribution for the needs of other suffering saints and all. And um, so uh, on the Lord's day, uh, he was in the spirit all the more. And uh, then when he was in the spirit, he heard, and I heard behind me a loud voice. Many a time we are not able to hear the Lord's voice because we are not in the spirit. <laughs> we are in the soul realm or in the body realm. Because our, uh, you know, uh, naturally speaking, a person's life is led by his own self-will. His self-will, stubborn self-will is there. And that ego, that self is deciding what to think, what to see, what to meditate, what to plan, what to do, what to say, where to go, what to eat how to spend time, how to spend money. That self is leading it. Uh, for an unconverted person, of course, it is true. Uh, but even for believers, even after the Lord has come as the Holy Spirit and their spirit, still the self is so strong. Self is on the throne. Self is leading their life. Uh, but actually, when we surrender ourselves and say that, Lord, I do not want my will, but your will in my life, then the Holy Spirit cuts our heart, cuts our spirit. Heart is our spirit. Not the first thing, but anatomical heart. But, uh, many a time, the word heart, uh, not all the time, but uh, many times, the word heart, the Bible denotes our spirit. Sometimes the word heart denotes our spirit and soul together also. Uh, many, many times it is denoting our spirit, human spirit. So, uh, in our spirit, the Holy Spirit will be flooding. When we surrender our, everything as a living sacrifice on the altar, the Holy Spirit will be flooding our spirit and this like, uh, you know, the radio station is tuned to the frequency. <laughs> some particular frequency, this the radio is tuned to some particular frequency like that, you know, in the olden days and all, nowadays and all, I don't know this radio tuning and all are there or not. In the olden days and all, they, they will be, uh, you know, uh, or when, when it is tuned to some station, they'll be hearing the uh, messages from that station. Uh, there will be many things, uh, many uh, what to say, uh, uh, many frequencies and whatever frequency you are reduced tuned to, you'll be able to pick up. So if you're, if you are tuned to the things of the world, if your mind is set on the things of the world, you will be hearing the things of the world only, the voices of the world, the clamor of this world. But if we humble ourselves and uh, surround ourselves before the Lord and allow the Holy Spirit to flood our lives, and if we are baptized or immersed in the Holy Spirit, then uh, many people think that if you are uh, immersed in the Holy Spirit, we'll be speaking in tongues. But, uh, you know, actually, that can be one of the manifestations of the fullness of the Holy Spirit only. I personally do not speak in tongues, but by the Lord's grace, I know that I am filled with the Holy Spirit. The Lord has given me, by the Lord's grace, some other gifts and all, but uh, not the gift of tongues. But uh, tongues is not the infallible mark of the fullness of the Holy Spirit. And many, uh, actually, unfortunately, most of what is called tongues in Christendom, probably more than 90-95% or even 99% of so-called tongues in this so-called Christian churches are fake and counterfeit and imitation and they're blabbering some words to and fro. And there are, I've heard some, there are some Bible colleges which train people to speak in tongues and all. You know, so many, they are encouraged to speak whatever that comes to their mind and blabber whatever, make whatever sound that comes to their mind and they call it tongues and all. But uh, that is actually, you know, the devil has deceived many people into that counterfeit. But when we are, when, if we are surrendered everything to the Lord, the Lord would be flooding our hearts with the real spirit of heaven and the fruit of the Holy Spirit, love, joy, peace, would be flooding our hearts. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faith and faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Galatians 5, 22, 23 will be flooding our lives and we'll be as if we'll be, we are in the presence of the Lord. 
in the uh, third heaven in the fullness in the presence of the lord there is fullness of joy and we will be able to hear what the lord is trying to tell us and the lord's voice was loud like the sound of a trumpet uh, actually in second kings uh, we read about uh, in a sorry in first kings rather first kings chapter 19 elijah <laughs> to elijah god is speaking uh, with the voice of a gentle blowing still small voices and kjv translates it if you turn to first kings chapter 19 verse 11 the lord said go forth and stand on the mountain before the lord behold the lord was passing by and a great and strong wind was rending the mountains and breaking in pieces the rocks before the lord and a strong wind rending the mountains uh, <laughs> and breaking in pieces the rocks before the lord but the lord was not in the wind it was a great wind and all but the lord was not there after the wind and earthquake but the lord was not in the earthquake also and after the earthquake a fire but the lord was not in the fire also and after the fire a still small voice a sound of a gentle blowing sometimes i feel the lord will be speaking to us in a still small voice only for hearts are quiet for heart is agitated and uh what to say <laughs> turbulent like martha <laughs> martha was you know we read about martha there in luke 10 <laughs> uh, she was worried and bothered about so many things and uh, jesus is telling her you are worried about read about so many things we'll come to that so here the, uh, the you know sound of a gentle boy still small voice if we turn to luke 10 uh, they actually we saw a, a progression the luke chapter 10 uh verse the 40 martha was distracted with all her preparations this just like a uh, serpent deceived eve by his craftiness and uh, their hearts would be uh, that your hearts would be strayed away from the simple and pure devotion to the lord so martha's heart was strayed away from the simple and pure devotion to the lord mary was sitting at the lord's feet uh, you know her uh, heart was focused on the lord simple pure devotion to the lord verse 39 but martha's heart was strayed away <laughs> from the simple pure devotion to the lord she was distracted in one sense eccentric you know when the circle has uh, the circle the circle center is uh, if you put a dot out of the center it is eccentric in one sense <laughs> that means actually god is not in the center of her life god is in some corner of her life and we are distracted and uh, my and she came up to jesus verse 40 and said lord do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the serving alone uh, they would they all would have cooked together but at least the serving part uh, you know when jesus was speaking to the disciples mary also came and sat at his feet to listen and uh, so are you uh, you know she has left me uh, to do all the serving alone then tell her Uh, to help me and martha is commanding jesus you know when we are proud and distracted and we will be so arrogant even to command jesus to almighty god but the lord answered and said to her martha martha you are worried and bothered about so many things you know so many uh, god is trying to speak to you with a still small voice and you are worried and bothered about so many things but one thing is necessary actually uh, you know some version says a few things are necessary uh, Uh, in malayalam it says alpame vendu onnu madi a few things are necessary actually only one so in one sense that progression many things you are uh, you are worried about so many things many things people worried about so many things that is in the outer court of the tabernacle many things they are worried about many things then comes the holy place <laughs> then only a few things Huh, very soulish people uh, not that not as bad as the outer court people but they are also few things are they are distracting they are uh, preoccupied with so a few things but in the most holy place we are beyond the way the selfless surrendered and they are filled with the holy spirit they entered the spirit realm the heavenly realm and there only jesus and me are there mary was there sitting at the lord's feet jesus and mary alone and uh, only actually that one thing which is in the most holy place is necessary May, mary has chosen that good part mary has chosen that good part of the word the living word that comes from jesus the words that are spirit and are life as jesus himself says in john 663 and the word 
hearts that become life and spirit in our spirit that has become part of our spirit cannot be taken away from us the word that is that we have memorized and all of course the words reference and uh, the word the memory words and all sometimes actually we might forget and all or sometimes if you get old and get some dementia if you get some brain injury you know there will be the memory of the words and all might go but the word the living word that has become part of a spirit that cannot be taken away the inner man the word that has nourished and strengthened the inner man that is the uh, that that is a treasure that cannot that where the moth and rust do not uh, thieves cannot come and take or the moth and rust cannot destroy this says that to have your treasure in heaven so if our uh, spirit uh is there in the lord's presence with the fullness of the holy spirit we can be there in the lord's presence and our treasure is jesus himself and his life in our spirit and that if we, if we are laying up treasure in heaven then that you know if we turn to matthew 6 uh, uh do not store up for yourself treasures on earth of course you know god is telling us to <laughs> save for the future and if you do not uh you know if you do not uh, care for your own household if you do not save up for your own uh first timothy 5 8 says that if you uh do not take care of your own household first timothy 5 8 if anyone does not provide for his own and especially for those of his own household he has denied the faith faith and is worse than an unbeliever so we have to save up for the future we need to learn from the end we need to uh, parents have to save up for the children second corinthians uh, 12 14 15 says that parents have to save up for the children and all but uh, if our treasure isn't that wealth and all if you're storing up for yourself the treasures on earth whatever you are cherishing and uh, you know cherishing and looking forward to and uh, you are preoccupied with that your treasures on this earth only then uh, they actually all these things moth and rust will destroy uh, and uh, thieves <laughs> breaking and break in and steal but store up for yourself treasures in heaven they in the most holy place in in the lord's presence our treasure is there jesus himself is our treasure and jesus life imparted to us through the holy spirit you know in a man that is our treasure and uh, 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 you know that there the where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in nor steal but where your treasure is there your heart will also be your heart is also set on heavenly things on the heavenly one the lord jesus himself and that which the mary has chosen shall not be taken away from her and that is uh, that is the words that we hear from the lord and the word is the uh, that voice his voice we uh, Jesus, uh, john says that he heard the lord's voice like the sound of a trumpet and verse 15 later, uh, revelation chapter 1 verse 15 latter part says that his voice was like the sound of many waters when we hear the lord's voice of course you know, we might think that it is just about some you know voice with some repercussions or whatever you know that uh, resonation resonating voice or anything like that And actually, many waters is symbolizing the Holy Spirit. Waters is symbolizing the Holy Spirit. So Jesus' voice was like the wo- sound of many waters. Meaning, his uh, voice had the power of the Holy Spirit, the rivers of living water, the anointing in Jesus' voice. And when we hear the Lord speaking to us, the more the Holy Spirit will be imparted into our spirit. Of course, when we surrender ourselves, we have to be in the Spirit to hear the Lord. And when we hear the Lord, all the more the holy spirit will be spreading our hearts that's why we put the topic today as being in the spirit and hearing the lord jesus voice that that lead the lord jesus voice imparts us with the holy spirit all the more in our spirit and uh, man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the lord and so there in first kings we saw uh, you know the sound of a still small voice god sometimes whispers to our heart sometimes it be clear as a trumpet uh, i've heard brother zack saying that you know the more we walk with the lord the sound of the lord will be more clear to us and the more clear you know just like we won't miss a unless we are deaf we won't miss the sound of a trumpet <laughs> so like that the word the word of god will be so clear, crystal clear to us what the lord wants us to do in one particular situation uh, the lord's voice 
play loud as a trumpet and there in uh, job in the book of job we read uh, chapter 38 job chapter 38 verse 1 there we read that how god spoke to job then the lord answered job out of the whirlwind and said who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge so there lord is speaking out of a whirlwind there in uh, elijah's time god was not there in that uh, wind of earthquake or fire or anything like that but god was speaking with the sound of a gentle blowing we need to sense the promptings of the lord and uh, if we have that heart of that samuel boy who prayed speak lord for the servant is listening for samuel 3 9 and 10 uh you know there is this psalm 119 135 which i often read make thy face shine upon thy servant and teach me thy statutes psalm 119 verse 135 and psalm 119 another verse that is there is uh, verse 18 all uh, these are prayers uh, for a prayers to prayers as a longing to see the lord Psalm 119 verse 18. Open my eyes that I may behold the wonderful things from your law. So if we have that heart of listening to the voice of the Lord, then actually the more we listen to the Lord, the more there will be that imparting of that Holy Spirit's power in our life. The more our life will be fresh. You know, the manna that was held in the most holy place remained fresh all throughout the generations. Exodus 16, last verse we read that. but the manna that was kept in any other place bread worms within 24 hours but actually the manna which was kept in the most holy place in the lord's presence manna whatever the lord is speaking to our hearts if that becomes part of a spirit and if we remain humble and are in the most holy place before the lord then the word of god will be a fresh revelation to us even if that revelation came to us 10 years ago still when we speak that when we we experience that as a fresh revelation and we speak that also there will be a freshness and uh, that is what the lord desires of us and john 10 we read about uh, the voice of the shepherd and the voice of the strangers voice of the shepherd john 10 verse 4 uh, the other day i was speaking to <laughs> yesterday i was speaking to uh, one brother and uh, uh, he was saying that uh, many years ago something one uh, you know some christian brother told him that became so etched into his heart but actually that confused him that confused his way of seeing things and all sometimes and then i said i mean actually if you don't sense it is the voice of the shepherd if if you sense it is the voice of a stranger if it is confusing you and if it is not really in accordance with the word of god reject that uh, you know then i was quoting this verse to him yesterday also john 10:5 John 10:4 says when the shepherd puts forth all his own he goes ahead of them and the sheep follow him because they know his voice we need to get to know the lord's voice through the word of god as we meditate the lord's lord's word daily and seek to hear from him we get to uh, we get uh, get familiar with the lord's voice just like you know we know uh, we can recognize our spouse's voice or our mother or father's voice or children's voice even even if there are so many people speaking over uh, over the other side of the wall we know we will be able to pick up the voice of our own family members because we have heard their voice so often even if they call from some other phone also when we hear, hear them speaking hello itself we will uh, know that oh, this is you brother this is you sister this is you amma appa because we know their voice like that Uh, we need to sense what the lord is trying to we need to be familiar with the voice of the lord when the lord speaks of course there there is an impartation of life and peace uh, and we know uh, this is the lord's voice but sometimes actually if it is being bringing unrest and uh, it is bringing confusion and uh, well, then there is stranger's voice verse 5 uh, john 10 5 a stranger they simply will not follow but will flee from him because they do not know the voice of the strangers so how we need to be in tune with the holy spirit we need to be flooded with the holy spirit to listen to the still small voice of the lord and of course that can become loud as a trumpet because it becomes more and more clearer to us as we walk with the lord hebrews 5:11 uh, the writer is uh, telling about uh, writer is telling those people uh, those jewish christians 
you have i have many things to say to you but you have become dull of hearing because you have hardened your conscience so much so that now you are not able to sense what the lord is trying to tell you you have become dull of hearing hebrews 5:11 by this time you ought to have become teachers but still you need to have the elementary things of the word of god to be taught to you again let us let us press on to perfection that is what he is saying over there so actually we can become more and more sensitive to hearing the lord's voice as we become sensitive to sin you know whenever the lord points out some sin in our conscience something to repent of something to set right something to if we need to apologize to somebody if we hurt somebody with our words uh if something that we did or did not do or something that we spoke or did not speak has hurt somebody else uh, if the lord is telling in our conscience to go and reconcile with that person as we read in matthew 5 24 23 24 if, if your brother or sister has something against you go and reconcile with the person first then come and offer your offering otherwise there is no use offering your offering uh, god if you regard iniquity in your heart god will not hear you that is what we read in psalm 66 verse 18 and uh, so the more we obey the voice of the lord through our conscience and through the word of god the more we'll be sensitive to the lord's voice and uh, gradually the lord's voice become more and more clear to us and uh, the more we hear the word of god and respond to that the more the anointing of the holy spirit more the power of the holy spirit will be imparted into our spirit and that is the blessed life that the lord has calling us to and uh, we'll hear from other brothers and sisters after we uh, close in prayer thank you loving heavenly father thank you for this blessed time thank you lord for enabling us to hear your still small voice even this evening help us to rise up higher we want to surrender ourselves totally before you cleanse us with your blood and flood our hearts with your holy spirit lord help us to rise up higher and to hear you and to see you with the eyes of faith and to experience your lord warm embrace of your arms lord to be secure safe and secure in your bosom and lord help us to hear your voice loud as a trumpet help us to discern your voice from the vo- voice of strangers and hirelings help us to know you our true shepherd lord jesus help us father flood us all the more with your holy spirit thank you father thank you jesus help each one of us bless the dear brothers and sisters and families meet our needs and let your name be glorified in jesus precious sweetest name we pray amen